All right, guys, as you all know, Palantir's earnings were released earlier this week. And of course, the stock did what it normally does, right? It gets beaten right back down right after earnings. You know, it just kind of tends to be the norm with this stock. So kind of today, I kind of wanted to give you guys a review of the earnings itself, kind of work through all the different points and kind of discuss some things that I normally don't hear discussed anywhere else in regards to earnings in general but especially with Palantir. And I might have included a little bit of a rough new updated price target for Palantir as well in this video. So I'll show all that to you today, right after you gently tap that like button and consider subscribing to It's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. Okay, so this is the exact video I released to my group right after the earnings call and everything else kind of happened and I kind of had time to digest it and everything else. But I'm gonna basically give you guys the highlights here. I'm not gonna give you the full long video here. Nobody wants to hear Luke for 25 minutes or anything crazy like that. So I'll break it down here and give you guys the highlights. And remember, if you want videos like this in real time in my group and the stock analyzer tool is here and all we're doing is just working on permissions and getting those out to our members so that way they can access the tool completely for free for them. And the price for the group will go up here in a little bit after everything kind of is settled and we like the way everything's flowing. But for now, you can take advantage and get that sale price for the life of your membership. So as long as you stay a member, you get to keep that price forever and use the tool forever as well. And it's getting better guys. We're adding more and more things to it. This is just phase one of the tool. You also get all my buy and sell alerts in real time. You get my watch list with price targets. You get to take five courses for free. Tons of exclusive videos. I release four or five of those a week. Uh, just a ton, guys. Just you get access to our Discord. Tons of six to seven figure investors in there helping everybody out. There's And there's a lot more coming as well. So make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and take advantage of this price before the price goes up forever. And yes, I realize I'm wearing the same shirt. And yes, it has been washed, I promise, guys. But anyways, let's dive into the video now. All right, guys. Well, I finally got to completely finish up all the due diligence on Palantir's earnings. You know, basically listening to the call, going through all the numbers, kind of going through my notes and everything else. And so I wrote up some quick highlights here uh, that I kind of wanted to share with you guys. Again, I don't want to give you a reaction. That's why I don't do that. Um, you know, again, a, a reaction carries a lot of emotions. We've seen that before in the past where, um, you know, a lot of folks got emotional about Alex banging the table and then somehow, you know, the earnings weren't good either during that time, but that somehow flowed into it's time to sell a stock. It's a dead company. All those other things like that, that kind of came up and that comes with emotions. And I just, you guys know, emotions are terrible for their investing. They absolutely kill your investing. So for me, I like to take this time, go through the notes, go through the call, kind of bounce everything off everything, make sure I'm, you know, my thesis is correct, make sure I'm not missing something, and then kind of move forward with my thoughts, how it fits into my plan, and kind of, you know, do I want to buy more, where I want to buy more at, and all that good stuff like that are all kind of answered within that. So that's the reason why I take this time. That's why I don't make quick reaction videos. Um, yes, we're going to start watching earnings calls live in real time. Or, I'm sorry, a little bit delayed, so that way we can pause and stop and some things of that nature as we go but the point of that and when we do that is going to be educational it's not so you can um you know copy off my homework or anything else like that it's so that way you can kind of see myself as a seasoned investor as somebody who's done this for a long time kind of some things that stick out to me kind of some things that you know i would be concerned about or not concerned about or maybe i can point out something like hey that's wall street speak for this or for that or whatever the case is there so we're going to start doing that uh the next go around there with earnings but it's more educational than it is for you to uh, cheat and not do your homework per se. It's more to show you how to do your homework. And so we're gonna start doing that, uh, you know, coming very, very soon. So I'm excited for that. Um, obviously you guys will be able to ask questions as we're going through that live. So that way we can, all of us can learn together and it turns into a great learning experience. So that's kind of the intent and the future of this, but let's get to this earnings call right here. So really some of the highlights were the EPS was in line, revenue was in line, which we pretty much, that's exactly what we discussed was going to happen there. Uh, they did guide up in terms of uh, operating income. I believe it was, what was it? I wrote it down here, 576 up from 556. Um, and that's a great number. Do not get it twisted. That is a very good. You always want to see those, you know, those guides up, those, um, you know, outlooks getting rosier, you know, better than we thought. Those are all positive things, but this wasn't a big enough jump to where it's going to send it to the moon or anything else crazy like that. Again, I haven't, I don't watch reaction videos. I have no idea what anybody else is saying but I can only imagine that there's some folks out there pumping this thing to the moon because of this particular guidance bump and good earnings overall and some things that are coming in the future. And I agree, it's good, but this isn't uh, to the moon type stuff. This is just a good, solid earnings call. Uh, very, very happy with it, but this isn't to the moon type stuff. This is not NVIDIA, what was it, last quarter, or quarter before, you know, where they had a massive beat top and bottom line. Oh, and by the way, their guidance was ridiculously, you know, it wasn't, you know, I mean, shoot, right now, you this isn't even a 10% jump. And guidance 
uh, NVIDIA's was massive. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but that right there was like a, not only was the earnings call a valuation reset for the stock, pushing the valuation a lot higher, you also had, you know, a guidance that pushed that number even further higher than that. So that's a huge difference between that and what we saw right here on the earnings where, you know, there wasn't a whole lot that kind of changed my valuation for uh, Palantir. They just executing to the valuation that I have. So there's no reason to make these crazy jumps or think anything's going to happen any differently than what it probably is going to do. So, you know, make sure you kind of keep that sort of stuff in line and make sure as you kind of think through these things, there's nothing negative about this. This is positive, but part of a normal market, part of a normal cycle is not your stock going up 200% in a year, not your stock going up 100% in a year. You know, a nice steady 15, 20%, maybe a 30% every year growth in the stock price is incredible and you will be absolutely crushing the market. So, you know, I don't need it to double or triple every time. I don't need it to go to $100 this year or $50 this year, even in order for it to be a great investment for me long term. So, that's why I don't get caught up in that sort of stuff. Um, and I can just tell you from an investor standpoint, not a ultra Palantir bull or an ultra Tesla bull or anything else like that, but just from a investor standpoint, this was a good earnings call, but it was not like in videos where it absolutely resets valuation and we should talk about it commanding a much higher multiple and a lot of other things like that. Now you can debate whether NVIDIA is going to perform to that, but that was the guidance that they put out there and that was the numbers that they put up at the time. So I can't dispute those. Those are hard facts as opposed to anything else, at least in regards to Palantir here, is pure speculation. And I don't need to speculate. I'm not into speculating with my investing. And more importantly, I don't need to speculate these grandiose plans for Palantir to be a great stock for myself to own. So we also had them buying back shares. You know, I think it was a billion dollars in uh, share buybacks. That's a great sign for me as an investor. I know sometimes it gets mixed. Uh, some people don't like it. Some people do like it. I personally like it. Um, you can only scale out this business so far so fast. The way that it is, as complex as it is, uh, that was pointed out by several members in the group there that kind of all the other support elements that come along with this, that you can scale it. You can scale it massively, but just kind of like, uh, you know, Tesla trying to scale. Hey, you can only bed factory so fast, right? You know, you can only... Uh, hire the best of the best talent, get them trained up in this highly complex product so fast. And there's only so many people with the talent level um, and with the skill level that could actually do what's required by Palantir. It's not like a grocery store, you know, or, uh, you know, Walmart or whatever, where you have, you know, you can hire employees to really support the business up and down kind of like the line of employees, you know, from top notch, you know, Harvard MBA, you know, super brains to, you know, your average worker, you know, working right there on the front lines. You have a wide range there. Palantir, you have a very, very narrow range. You need a very, very specific skill sets and, and you can't really deviate. There's not a lot of people with those skills. So it's very, very hard to attract that talent, find that talent and bring it in at scale in order to grow at scale. So, and you know, they have a giant cash pile anyways. So at some point in time, when you have so much cash and you don't have enough places to do it, or to put it to work, and more importantly, you're leaving it there for that rainy day, you know, for to make the business strong, to make the balance sheet strong, a lot of other things like that, us as investors, want to see that capital put to use. And one of the best ways you can do that, especially when the stock is beaten down from fair value, um, we'll see how it moves here over the next you know, three, four months or so, but is to buy back those shares. So that way, obviously that increases our shareholder value over the long term. Stock-based compensation obviously continued to decline. It was never a concern for me. This is all part of growth companies. They all do it. Um, large companies that have been around forever still give out stock-based compensation. It's not something new. It's not something that uh, I'm all that concerned with or ever was that concerned with. Um, you know, especially as you saw it trend down quarter after quarter, after quarter, after quarter, after quarter, but some people are still going to bring it up regardless and pretend like nobody else does it except for Palantir. And it's just silliness. So ignore that sort of stuff. That all looked good. Uh, let's see here. Free cash flow, of course, um, as they usually do continues to be good. That to me is the one thing that tipped me off that their financials were much better than they were reporting was the free cash flow number way back, you know, two years ago or so just the valuation was way out of whack. It was way too expensive. You know, what was it? 40 bucks, whatever the heck the number was, it was crazy. So onto the call here. And I thought it was honestly, it was okay. Um, it was very, uh, well, one, Alex is, was funny. Uh, his hair is uh, ridiculous as usual. It literally looked like he just woke up. Uh, I know that's the norm for him. I, I know, but you know, he didn't even bother <laughs> this time around. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, but to me, the call was okay. Uh, they're getting better each time. Um, this one seemed really, really contrived. Um, I don't know how else to do that. It was, um, uh, you know, the question and answer was very, very short. Uh, you know, you only got what two analysts and one of them was Dan Ives who just threw out a softball. Uh, what even like a, 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 it was a dumb question. Um, doesn't help anybody with anything. It was a softball to remain in the good graces of the company. Uh, and I guess that's good because he was one of the two people that got to ask questions and that was it. 
uh, you know, all the other questions were taken, I'm assuming from people that logged in on the investor page uh, or whatever the case is. Um, but those were not, you know, didn't get the analyst drilling uh, like you want. However, it wasn't like they didn't answer questions. They didn't avoid questions. Um, they talked over our heads a lot, but a lot less than they used to. Um, and that's all good signs. You can tell that they, um, and the reason why I would say it was contrived was because you could tell they knew some of the answer or some of the questions ahead of time. Um, some of the stuff sounded pre-recorded, pre-staged, um, and that's okay. I'm not saying it's wrong or anything else like that at all. I'm not, not saying that at all. Um, just that, you know, kind of when you look at it, kind of the stale background and everything else, it almost felt like an infomercial <laughs> in a sense. Uh, but nonetheless, for this management team right here, this is so much better than it was a year ago, uh, two years ago, that I, I, you can't really complain about it. They're getting better. It's very, very unnatural for this team and the way that their brains work and the way that you can tell that they discuss in private versus what they have to discuss publicly. Um, you can tell talking to investors versus just talking about Palantir itself is, is not difficult, but very, very hard to make that translation. However, I was very, very encouraged that, you know, Alex spoke to not necessarily, they did mention us as retail investors and saying, hey, we were kind of ahead of the curve on this, but speaking to larger institutional investors, kind of trying to show um, what the value is in Palantir. Uh, I think he learned an important lesson last year when he had companies telling him, hey, this is great. You guys are great, but we don't know if you're going to be around. Look at your stock. Look at your financials. Look at what you're showing. You know, and at that stage, he's going, well, that doesn't matter. I could fix that any time. Look, this is what we have. And I think he is finally understanding the bigger game of, hey, you have investors out there. This is what happens when you go public. You're no longer a private company where you can run it however you want. You have shareholders to answer to, and they want certain things. And oh, by the way, the way this business is run and the amount of cash that it prints, you can make both sides happy. And so you see them making concerted efforts throughout the call to not only discuss the future, the opportunity, what exciting products they have, um, how it's working in the real world, who it's helping, all those sort of things like that. So you could tell kind of with all of them there that they're trying to stabilize that investor base. And that's big for a stock is stabilizing an investor base. That's what you do when you're showing, hey, we can consistently be profitable. We are consistently going to have solid guidance moving forward. We're you know, trying to get into the S&P or make ourselves eligible to get into the S&P. So that way that will further stabilize the stock price, the company. That all attracts large investors, big money in, who don't want a lot of volatility. They don't want the stock running up to 45, then all the way back down to seven, and then back up to 40, and then you know back down to eight, and then you know up to 25, then back to, you know they don't wanna play that yo-yo game. They want nice steady returns. Sure, you're gonna have some ups and downs with the market, and that's okay, but not the wild volatility that you had before. And a lot of the steps that they're taking, and a lot of the things that not just Alex said, other folks in the group said too, um, trying to address those investor concerns and draw on that investor base now. And luckily for us, Palantir understands the long game of stuff. So building up that investor base isn't going to happen in a quarter, isn't going to happen in a year. It takes years to build out that investor base, right? You know, why did Apple not dip hard last year? Because of its investor base. You know, it, it, it just did. It, you know, how do you, during a time like last year where it was, a, you know, just there was everything crashed. I mean, even, even the Googles and the Metas and the Amazons, I mean, all the big dogs of the big dogs crashed down except for Apple. Why? Because it has a steady investor base, because they have the potentially the steadiest investor of all time, <laughs> Warren Buffett, owning that stock and owning a huge amount of that stock. And then, of course, that endorsement right there, he's not selling all the people that kind of follow Buffett. And there's a lot of funds out there that mimic his moves or, you know, have the same strategy as him or everything else. And they own Apple because he owns Apple. Those people aren't leaving either. Shareholders like myself, I'm not leaving regardless of what Apple does if there's no fundamental problems with the business. I don't care what the price does. When you get that investor base that solid, you don't see giant movements in the stock outside of when it goes on a run <laughs> because then everybody's piling in. But you don't see giant movements down because you don't get the selling pressure because you don't have just retail investors and hedge funds owning the stock like you do with Palantir right now where that movements are going to be wild, right? And then of course, you know, we tend to exaggerate those moves up and down worse, you know, hedge funds and retail investors, us, you know, we both tend to do that. When you bring in that more invest, you know, stable investor base. And as you grow that out, there can't be that tight volatility because you just don't have the sellers on the other side, nor are they going to just pile all in into some FOMO run or anything else like that. It eliminates a lot of that sort of stuff. So that's what they're trying to attract, obviously, because it helps their um, business long term. As people see a more steady stock price, a more steady set of financials coming out quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter, 
that will encourage other companies who are looking to, hey, do we use Palantir? Do we use somebody else? Whatever the case is, those are things that executives are looking at in regards to, do they go with Palantir or not? And that will be another kind of checkbox there that you know people that have shooed Palantir in the past are no longer going to be able to shoe them in the future, especially once we start seeing more and more results as more and more people come over. But part of that is building up that investor base. And you could tell it's exactly how a lot of this call was geared, was trying to attract that type of investor base. So that's kind of my overall thoughts there on the call. Uh, you know, again, there was nothing negative. It was good all the way around. Um, doesn't really change my plan a whole lot with Palantir, but definitely with this new focus on investors and building out that investor base. Um, for me, the, you know, averaging up in a stock, like we've talked about, isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, especially in regards to Palantir here, if we get any sort of a dip. But I'm going to take a look at that there, see exactly uh, where I want to put that price target. My guess is probably if it gets under 15, I'm going to buy again. Um, but again, I need to sit down and actually put math to it. Uh, but that's kind of the loose um, target that I'm kind of working with there in regards to me adding more. Now, remember, I already have a position. I don't need any more shares. This is just adding bonus shares to a great company that's performing really, really well. And I really like what they're doing. So that for me is kind of where I have it. But, you know, you need to do your own due diligence, if I could talk, and figure out your own price target, figure out how it fits with your plan. Palantir is not right for everybody's portfolio. So you need to kind of do all that work and kind of create your own there. Don't just follow mine because it may never get down below 15. It may go all the way back down to eight again. Who freaking knows? It's Wall Street. Anything is possible. I'm not here to try and guess where the stock is going. I'm here to execute my plan and own the shares that I want to own over the course of the long run. And I don't care if I win this year or not. I'm worried about winning five years from now, 10 years from now. Tell me where Palantir is 10 years from now and tell me if you're happy with the share price today versus 10 years from now. And if you want to see me execute this strategy in real time, see all my buy and sell alerts in real time, see my watch list with price targets, be able to take five courses for free, get that stock analyzer tool completely free if you're a member and a ton of other information. I mean, heck, you can slide into my DMs. You can jump on our Q and A's, ask me questions live. I stay on there as long as you guys have questions and a ton more. Make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and see if a membership's right for you. And click this video here to see the exact stocks I'm buying right now and click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.